Uh, Google got into a bit of trouble, Will. Ordered to pay a $170 million penalty over collecting kids' personal info. We talked about it in the past on this show about the issue, the difficulty in figuring out how to serve content to youngsters, to, to young people, uh, where there's currently in traditional media some pretty significant restrictions on how that is done and also on how it's monetized. Mm -hmm. What the advertising threshold is for a young person, what type of content is suitable, and so forth. And YouTube has made waves in various areas of this content for various reasons. Some positive, a lot negative. It's so sensitive is the key when you're talking about kids and what kids are watching. And a lot of parents, are they just hand over the iPad, load up YouTube kids, and they're like, see you later. Almost enabling YouTube as kind of the babysitter of their kids. And we all know where that goes. They don't necessarily know what they're looking at. They don't have a fully formed brain. They can't look at things objectively. They're just watching, so that can, of course, be dangerous. Now, the lawsuit, in it, the, 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 or the payout, I should say, the $170 million payout, is in response specifically to the way that advertising is working around content targeting young people and how YouTube works in general when it comes to advertising, which is it gets to know the user so then it can therefore match that user with the advertiser or the advertiser with the user, I should say. Mm -hmm. So an advertiser can find its correct target audience. This is how Google operates. This is what they do very well. Well, it turns out, at least the, the claim here, is that they were enabling those tools to gather data on people that they knew weren't adults and to then advertise to them and to sell that information, essentially, to advertisers that wanted access to them. And that's where they violated certain restrictions around how you are allowed to market to young people. So, in response, Google puts out a blog post about a, a YouTube, put, YouTube puts out a blog post, Google, YouTube, whatever you want to call it. And they say, look, we're going to make some major changes here. This is not a good look for us. And this is something I've been predicting for a while. I'm not alone. A lot of people have been predicting this for a while, that something was going to have to change in this department because of how sensitive it is. And they put out this blog post essentially saying, look, everything's going to change on our site. We're no longer going to try to guess if it's a young person watching content that we deem targeted at young people. We're no longer gonna assume that just because the person with the account is 20 years old, that that means the person watching the content is 20 years old. Instead, what we're gonna do is gonna use algorithms and various other tools to decide on our own accord if a kid might wanna watch this and if this is targeted at a young person. And if that's the case, we're going to scale back significantly our advertising efforts, primarily on the data collection process that we would typically use on a person we want to advertise to. So that's a lot of words. There's a lot of stuff there. And I don't have any, I'm, I'm running out of words just trying to describe it. Catch your breath. But the way to think about this, Will, is that content targeted at children is far more vague and the scope of it could be huge if they deem something as targeting children, what about when children are in it? What if it's a family vlog in which they say, oh, it's uh, Amanda's first day of school. Mm -hmm. And Amanda's a kid, and then a kid types first day of school, and now they're watching this, which is really an adult vlog, but right. it just so happens to feature a child. So the first part of it is explaining how they're going to try to figure that out. The next part of the blog post is, hey, if you're a family vlogger, if you're a family channel or a kid's channel, you better get your ducks in a row mm -hmm. because things ain't going to be good for you. you. YouTube within this blog post has basically said you have four months to figure things out. And the way I interpret it is the money is about to stop flowing mm. based on the way that I read it. Now, they don't say that explicitly, they say, you know, we're trying to help out. They say we're looking at alternative ways and, 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 and this and that. But I think YouTube is taking a major step back from the way they are monetizing and approaching this type of content. And they're going to take a far more careful approach than they have in the past. Part of it is this uh, fine that they got for 170 But 
a big part of it is just the bad press. Right. When anything goes wrong with kids, it's like a hundred times worse. It's like, you did what? Mm -hmm. You knew about what? And they probably knew it was a ticking thing that they were going to have to take care of. So here's a little bit from the update. In order to identify content made for kids, creators will be required to tell us when their content falls in this category. And then on top of that, we'll use machine learning to find videos that target young audiences. For example, those that have an emphasis on kids, characters, themes, toys, or games. So you can't lie about it. You can't be like, you know, this content isn't for kids and then it turns out that it's kids that's watching it. And I'm a bet on YouTube on this one. I think they're probably, in most cases, going to be able to tell the difference. Now, if you scroll down to investing in family creators, this is where things you, this is where things get real serious. It's almost like someone got fired from a job here. Listen to this. We know these changes will have a significant business impact. Business impact. You see that? Well, you know what that means, right? That's just the dollar signs. You know when they put three yeah. dollar signs in a row? It, they didn't say impact. They didn't say have a significant impact on family and kids creators. They said a significant business impact. That means your money's about to evaporate hmm. from pre-roll because we're not going to have it anymore because we no longer know anything about the audience. So we no longer can figure out what ad would even be suitable for them. Hmm. If you're no longer collecting data, they got to stop the product pretty much altogether. Uh, significant business impact on family and kids creators who have been building both wonderful content and thriving businesses. So we've worked to give impacted creators four months to adjust before changes take effect on YouTube. You have four months to find a new job mm -hmm. or to figure out your own sponsors outside of the pre-roll mechanisms to figure out a way to continue to survive. You have four months. It, it, this is the way I'm reading it. Four months to still be on pre-roll. Or to still have, maybe even, it's like a severance, you know, if you get fired, it's like a severance, severance pack. Pay, yeah. Maybe they just gave them some pay equivalent to what they were earning on pre-roll and, and just said, okay, you have four months to figure out. Maybe that's what happened. I don't really know, but it's something like that. We recognize this won't be easy for some creators and are committed to working with them through this transition and providing resources to help them better understand these changes. Not resources, period resources to help them better understand these changes in other words if you need to commiserate if you want to call us up and it's like rehab yeah exactly exactly now at the bottom there it does say they're going to invest a hundred million dollars dispersed over three years for the creation of thoughtful original children's content on youtube so this is youtube possibly becoming more like pbs or something like this where they're like, oh, maybe we sh maybe it does matter what our kids watch. Maybe Sesame Street wasn't so bad. Yeah. Maybe we should throw a lesson or two in the content that kids are vegging out on mm -hmm. instead of just flipping between the next colorful, gooey thumbnail. Right. It's possible. So I think YouTube's going to change quite a bit, and it's going to happen in four months. And if you're a creator in any of these spaces or you watch this kind of stuff, then uh, here you go. You can be aware it's... It's uh, it's changing for good, and I and and I mean that for good. I think it had to happen in some way because it was getting too. It was getting weird. It's getting squir squirrely. It, squirrely is the right word. Yeah, it's the perfect. If you look it up, it's a picture of a squirrel, and then it's you <laughs> saying that word. I don't know. 